For 40 days on God, Family, and Guns, we'll be focusing on God. We have a series on spiritual warfare, the end of times, the prophecy of Daniel, and the prophecy of Malachi. If you want to see our gun-related or Second Amendment-related content, you can see that on Patreon or the History of Weapons. Those links are below. Welcome to a series that we call The End of Times, where we're going through the book of Revelation verse by verse to try our best to see what it is we can expect to happen in the end times, or the time Jesus refers to as the end of the age. Now, I want to take this particular episode and focus on kind of a recap, a reminder of what it is we've gone through to this point, because where we are is we just finished chapter 13 and we're about to start chapter 14. Now, it's important we kind of pause at this moment, kind of remind us where have we gone, because Revelation, as we've said in many episodes, is not something you could just simply read like a book, uh, just kind of go through and it tells a story and you follow the storyline. Oftentimes we're seeing things on earth, we see things in heaven, we see things in the spiritual realm, we see things... Um, so we're kind of bounced around a little bit, um, and we're about to pick back up on the timeline. We've been off of the timeline for many chapters. So we're going to take this episode, we're just going to kind of recap what's taken place, and then we're going to lead into chapter 14. So, um, you know, I want to kind of remind you, uh, we've said this also in several videos, is that if you haven't watched the other episodes, uh, this is episode 86, or if you haven't read Revelation verse by verse and studied it out, it's very important that you do. You can't just jump in and j grab a verse or two and become an expert and suddenly you understand that verse because Revelation is about our future. It's about yours and my future and the roles we are to be playing in that future. You can't just maybe understand it because if you maybe understand it, it's you might be easily led astray by the Antichrist thinking you're following the right thing, but you're not. So it's very important that you take the time to really dig deep. If you haven't watched the other 85 episodes, I recommend that, or if you haven't gone through it in a study group or some sort of thing like that. I also don't use commentary. We only use the Bible as a reference. So uh, let's just kind of jump right in. Where have we gone? Well, in Revelation, again, you can't read it like a storyline. So we're just going to kind of kind of jump onto that. In Revelation 1.1, what we see is kind of this introduction to uh, who John is. And he then see, he's on uh, the island of Patmos in, in exile, and he sees Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, throughout chapter 1, establishes his authority and who he is. And he also, part of that authority is he's the head of the church. Uh, he is the the groom and the church is the bride, and he goes through for three or two chapters talking about uh, really criticisms of the church of the world. And the biggest mistake a lot of people say is, well, this doesn't apply to us today. Every single church that is on the planet that calls himself a Christian church will find themselves somewhere in chapters two or three. And he doesn't have a lot of great things to say about the churches, by the way. He does have a few good things, mostly it's pretty damaging. Um, by the time we get to chapter 4, John is then taken up into the Spirit to the throne room of God. And this is an awesome chapter because we're given a chance to look around where we see the, uh, God himself and the throne of God. And uh, there's four living creatures surrounding the throne of God. And there's elders and angels. And uh, it's just really a beautiful scene. There's a, an ocean in the throne room of God. It's it's really just a glorious thing to see. And then we see um, that John notices God has a scroll in his hand. And it has seven seals and it is determined that only Jesus Christ is worthy to open that scroll. And by the time we get into chapter 5, we're starting to see, uh, and 6, we're starting to see these, these seals be broken. Uh, when the first seal is broken, we see a white horseman. Now, these horsemen... They're often, mis they're often confused and misinterpreted as well. These horsemen work for God. Uh, they are soldiers for God. So everything that the horsemen are doing, they're doing it the direction of God. Oftentimes they, there's this misconception that these are uh, individual entities or they're evil. They're not. 
they are of God. And the first horseman, the white horseman, um, the first seal, there's kind of a strange occurrence of leadership. Uh, by the second seal, there's war breaking out on earth. The third seal, uh, th seal is broken. There's scarcity on the earth, a lot of starvation. By the time we get to the fourth seal, there's widespread death on the earth. And by the time we get to the fifth seal, it's right at that fourth seal and into the fifth seal that I, I believe um, that the abomination has taken place. Um, the abomination is a very critical point because it's prophesied in Daniel and Revelation. There's a moment where the Antichrist will sit in the throne room of God in the temple of God in Jerusalem and declare himself to be God. And that's a very, very bad day for the world. Um, Jesus talked about this day and he said, if you are in Jerusalem, just whatever you're doing at that moment, drop whatever you're doing and flee to the wilderness. Um, it's a bad day for Christians because that begins the warring of the saints. And we know this is the case because by the time we get to the fifth seal, we start to see uh, the saints being slaughtered. They're showing up in heaven in the fifth seal, uh, being killed, asking God about when are you going to perform justice on this God? And he said, just be patient. Essentially, he says you have to wait till tribulation is over. Um, by the time we get to the sixth seal, there's kind of a cosmic disturbance that, that brings some darkness um, now, the sixth seal is a precursor to the trumpets as well, and we'll get into that here in a bit. Um, also, we see that then the um, Israel, there's 144,000 Israelites that are marked by God. They're, 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 God's name is literally written on their forehead by an angel, and then the destruction from the angels come. Um, and then we see the multitude of of Christ's followers coming to heaven, just multitudes of tribes, tongues, nations coming up to heaven, slain by the Antichrist. And then we get to the seventh seal, and that's the prelude to the seven trumpets. Uh, once that seventh seal is broken, the, the interesting thing about that moment in time is because when the seventh seal is broken, a lot of people don't think about it this way, but then that scroll is open, and once God starts to read that scroll into existence, it becomes reality and, and it starts in the form of trumpets. First trumpet, vegetation struck. Second trumpet, uh, the sea is struck uh, by a meteor. The third tr trumpet, the water is poisoned. Uh, it poisons the hearts of men and sickness grows throughout the land. The hearts of men and women and the sickness grows because of an angel named Wormwood. A lot of people say Wormwood is a meteor. It's not. It's an angel named Wormwood. Um, the second trumpet is where the meteor hit. The third trumpet is when Wormwood causes problems. The fourth trumpet um, is essentially just a, a warning uh, that the, you know the world becomes darkened, and then there's just this warning. And then the fifth trumpet, um, the bottomless pit is open, and smoke comes out, and then uh, lots of creatures are coming out. Now these are also godly creatures because. Uh, for example, there's these hornets that are stinging people, but it specifically says don't sting those marked by God. Only those that are not marked by God. Only harm them. Um, and then we see in the sixth trumpet, uh, the, the Eur Euphrates River is dried up and there's some bound angels underneath there that are released and they just start killing off humanity. And I believe it's at that sixth trumpet, right at the seventh trumpet, that the rapture of the church occurs. Um, and then we, uh, we see um, John is given, a, and then the kind of the story pauses for a moment, and John is given a, the book, and he's essentially ingested the entire word of God. And then we see two witnesses, and um, you know, these two witnesses are widely interpreted. I, I strongly believe, if you look at other prophecies of Ezekiel, Zechariah, um, you will see that these are not two um, prophets, not, not to say two prophets don't show up, but the two witnesses are definitely the, the Jews and the Gentiles preaching the word of God. What you have is you have 144,000 Jews and a multitude of tribes, nations, and tongues preaching the word of God. They're given supernatural power to overcome for three and a half years where they're finally killed. And then on the third day, they then are raptured up. And that's, again, another sign that the rapture is right before the seventh trumpet or right at the seventh trumpet. 
Um, and then the seventh trumpet blasts. Uh, I mean, then there's another pause in the story because the seventh trumpet is declaring the coming of Jesus Christ. It's saying now is the time. So at that seventh trumpet is when Christ returns, but then the story pauses again. And we're introduced to the woman, the child, and the dragon. The woman is Israel. The child is Jesus Christ and what he birthed into this world um, by, by laying down his life. And the dragon is uh, Satan and a third of the angels uh, trying to devour that from the moment that really Abraham was given a covenant in the very beginning. He's been trying to devour that thing. And then we see that war is broken out in heaven and uh, Israel is being persecuted at this point, um, and that God, you know, because we're in the tribulation now, and that God has prepared a place for Israel in the wilderness to take care of them and God's people. Um, and then we're introduced to two beasts, the beast of the seed. This is the Antichrist. It's a king. It's it, the Antichrist is a man, but he's part of a kingdom of uh, ten kings, and they essentially control the world. Uh, he takes a fatal head wound and then kind of shows up for work the next day, and now people begin to worship him. And, and it shows in, in chapter 13 here that he is declaring war against the saints because they're the only people on the planet not worshiping him. And then we're introduced to the beast from the land. The beast from the land is a two-headed beast made up of two men who will cause the world to worship the beast, will cause the world to take the mark of the beast, um, he's kind of an evil guy. He's really the puppet master causing uh, all these things to take place. And that's where we are. So, um, and now we're going to get into chapter 14, um, where we're still kind of given a pause in the story. But uh, chapter 14 is pretty critical because what we see in chapter 14 is, ultimately, we see those 144,000 marked by God in heaven. Now they're in heaven with the Lamb, and, and it's a significant moment in time that we see that because as we look at these 144,000, you know, the, we realize that as the judgment of God, because a lot of people don't believe in a, a post tribulation rapture because they believe that, you know, God said He was going to not rain down His judgment on them. Well, if you look at the timeline following Daniel, the timeline clearly says that for three and a half years of tribulation, then they get raptured up. And then there's a 40 day period of time where there's just darkness and judgment and God is raining it down before Christ returns. So it's at the end of tribulation, but before Christ returned, right at that seventh trumpet, right before that seventh trumpet, that they are raptured up. And it's important that we see that because when we look at these 144,000 marked by God, which we've been following for quite a while, we now see them in heaven with the Lamb of God. Um, right before the bowls of judgment are rained down on the earth. So um, that's kind of where we're at. I hope this uh, video helps. I kind of just blasted through 13 chapters of Revelation in like 10 minutes. Uh, but again, I think it's important we kind of see where we are at this point. I mean, in the timeline, seven seals have been broken. Uh, the seven, uh, six trumpets have blasted. And then there was, we're at that seventh trumpet. And we've been at that seventh trumpet for several chapters. Uh, we've been at the seventh trumpet um, since chapter 11, and there's just now we're in chapter 14, and we're about to kind of pick back up on what's taking place on the earth. So, uh, again, hope this is helping. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, put them below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support this channel through Patreon, that link is also below. But the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests, so never hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.